540, and we will start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance.
looking for copies of their medical records and refills on their prescriptions. Here's what I told them. I used to be annoyed by the interruptions to my work until I realized those interruptions were The mission before First of all, I just want to say I'm glad I'm alive. I'm also glad you people are alive, everyone here. So God bless you. Especially where you live. So what I'm about to say is going to rock this room a little bit, particularly the board members. Right? Most people come to meetings like this for several reasons. Either they got nothing to do, and I can't believe all of you are here because you got nothing better to do. All right? Or out of interest out of deep concern, what's happening? Why am I here today? Not to get a free beer. I did see some beer bottles earlier. And first of all, let me say, if I need extra time, if I could get extra time from others who signed to speak, okay? My background and what I truly believe in, integrity, faith. That's my foundation. Every organization, be it in the corporate world or nonprofit organization, Key word, integrity. I hope all of you had a chance to sign a no conflict of interest document when you took your position. You ran on the point of representing homeowners and their best interests for the majority. Yeah, you can't please everyone. We all know that. Simple as that. Fiduciary duty. Many of us in the working world, especially management, leadership role, truly understand that. But it also goes down to the average hard-working individual. Because that gets people in trouble. I'm pretty sure for the most part all of you are great people. And this is not personal, what I'm about to say. It's about doing the right thing. I come from a law enforcement family, military family. I was raised to do the right thing. Do the right thing. And why I'm here, I'm frustrated. I get a bunch of emails, messages, see it on social media, all this going on, a lot of information out there. You know? And when I start looking into it myself, not that I got all the time in the world, I see so many dots and started collecting together, matching it. Conflict of interest. Okay? There's enough information out there, be it our roles and the outside of the board who we work for, our titles, positions, what have you. Okay, who we know, decisions. You deal with a lot of money. You know, waste of money. This uh, study that was recently done on hurricane preparedness, emergency preparedness, when I heard that, oh my God. You know, that was total waste of money. Bar. Can I have someone that's three minutes? No, sir. Well, no, sir. Why is that? It doesn't work that way. All right, I'm going to ask yeah. one thing. Sheila, out of order. order. It does work. If somebody wants sir, to work. Sir, you're out of order. You're See, out of order. You're out of order. You're, you're out of order. Let the man speak. Let the man speak. Sir, you have three minutes you can't go to address on. Okay. And I, I will do that, Brent. This is what I'm talking about, Brent. Sir, your three minutes are up. Brent? So, Sheila, out He's a good thing. He is a member of this yeah. association. Yeah. We are we are all of this association. On on. Everyone no, in this raise your hand if you'd like to make a speech. All right, thank yeah. you very much. I think we have that. Uh, a majority of the people that's the problem. That's, that's We've never done it. That's what we Sir, your three minutes are up. Sheila. So I will your, I will contact the media, we'll take care of the public matter. Please. Media. You can trust me on that. You've already set precedents. You've already let other people give their time to other people. Sheila, you're right. I would like you to you, resign as I, well as other board members that have made decisions Sheila, of conflict of interest as well as John Nelson. <laughs>
So perhaps you've been That's researching the wrong person. Also known as Brent Moore, but you're, you're David, right? Uh, this is where, so for me, I if, just would like all of the if you were, if you were, My real name is David Brent Moore. Thank you. And I'm going to be out of order. So, um, okay, so I'm gonna be I will um, and I'm gonna move be on to Neil, I'm gonna be Neil out of Pelosi. Order. Because Ma I brought something to you that's Ma going you're to out of order. And you you're not going to. Ma'am. Brent, shut up. Sorry. You wouldn't hear Sir, it. you're I out of order. You, I brought you the accountant's name, and you said no. You wouldn't look into it. No, ma'am. That, that is a lie. No, that's not. That I is talked a lie. to you on the phone, and I gave that you a name. That is a lie. No, you're lying right there for The good thing is, the oh, good thing Brent. is, ma'am, you have it in writing. And so do I. And I it will be in the moon tomorrow. I talk to you. It will on be the in the moon tomorrow. You, you, you are lying. Okay. So Nick Pelosi. Michelle Jeffers. I'm Michelle Jeffers. My name was on the agenda as one of the people who was wasting money for the work. My comment is in response to my name and my others appearing on this month's agenda and your own budget expenses heading. The information I requested was an electronic document that the executive coordinator should already have prepared for the POA since mailings such as invoices for dues, late notices, violation letters, and balanced POA members. An efficient employee will keep this file updated and easily accessible. I can't imagine attaching a PDF document to an email and click and send take, takes much longer than 10 seconds or so. And the cost of this activity is negligible. However, here's a dime. It's never about 10 seconds. The <laughs> coordinator should have taken his request. I'm happy to reimburse the POA for any extraordinary expenses related to my information request. However, the purpose of having POA staff whose salaries and benefits are paid for by the POA members, such as myself, is to serve the POA membership, which includes information requests. Additionally, as a member of the POA, I expect delivery of complete and unredacted documents. The board should also bear in mind that I and others are quite aware that we are not the first or only members to request documents from the POA. However, we are the first to be added to an agenda item and accused of incurring costs to the POA for doing so. This is an intim intimidation tactic designed to discourage dues paying PO member POA members from rightfully making requests of the POA, and this practice should stop. Furthermore, since the information I requested was delivered incomplete and redacted, the board is advised right now to go ahead and budget into this month's expenses the cost of correcting the executive coordinator's mistake and delivery of the complete data.
no security policies or procedures. Period. There's no security education for the staff to tell them how to do security within the organization. Zero security. In the professional business, we call this security aversion. Okay. Now, there's degrees of security aversion. This organization is the extreme version where they say, we don't do security, we don't have to do security, it's not our responsibility to do security, and you don't pay us to do security. Ergo, we don't do security. To wit, they hire CompuTube Integration, a completely unqualified, unknown organization to come in and have full access to POA membership information. They gain access to our offices, our staff, and our system. They have no qualification whatsoever to do anything it remotely involved with networking and security. My wife is passing out information right now that shows my qualifications versus CompU integrations qualifications versus our POA security qualifications. It doesn't look good, by the way. Um, I've been doing security for 40 years. This is really not a good situation. $11 million organization, they run it like a Boy Scout troop. All right? Hey, better respect for Boy Scouts now. <laughs> So when you limit us to three minutes, that's fine as a guideline. When you have a crowd like this, you better recognize that there's more interest and more concern, great concern for the operations of the, the, of the Second item, whenever you go to a board meeting for virtually any other organization, particularly government organizations, there's always an opportunity for public comment on every agenda item, particularly agenda items where there's going to be action. But there's no opportunity for the members, the paying members of this association to provide input when you're going to be taking action, when you're going to be spending money, when you're going to be making decisions, when you're going to be changing bylaws. There's no opportunity for the members to be part of that. That is outrageous. You need to change that policy. You need to change your agenda. You need to provide opportunities for the members, the people that pay for the, your operation here, to be able to provide input. And, you, and when you do things like put people's names, members' names on the agenda so by surprise, it'd be a good idea to let them know and to be very thoughtful in terms of how you choose when or when not to put their names on the agenda. I am extremely upset. I came here last, at the last special board meeting. I told you you'll be seeing me. You're going to be seeing me on every board meeting. I'm tired of seeing the way this board is run. It's run, it's run like the Boy Scouts. It's run like a, a cookie factory. You, you're representing 
you're, the members up here, you're, you're doing a very poor job of representing the, the members. I think the members have a right to speak, and I think they have a right to speak on every agenda item. Incidentally, your agenda item doesn't say when you're going to take action. It just says motions as, as needed. So we don't know when you're going to be taking actions. So you go off and you take actions, and there's no opportunity for the Yeah, look at the um, timer. There's no opportunity for the members to speak. You need to provide opportunities for the members to speak on actions where you're going to be spending our money. Thank you. Is it uh, Deneen Broyles? I pass. Yes, it is. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Dan Broyles. Dale. I'll pass too. Dale. All right. Um, also. It's Jeff. Jeff. Okay. I have did some light summer reading. It is Robert's Rules of Order. And I need to inform this board that you need to read Robert's Rules of Order. Because none of your meetings function according to Robert's Rules of of order. And don't smirk, Mr. President, because asking. according to Robert's Rules of Order, you're supposed to have great knowledge of this book and how meetings are supposed to function. I belong to a PTO in the wilds of New Jersey, and our business me our board meetings were conducted with greater efficiency and openness to the members I was treasurer. I had to account for every single penny that came in and went out every single board meeting. No, we weren't a big organization, but these rules have been around for hundreds of years. It's how you practice law in a court of law and it doesn't become a fistfight. It is how major corporations function at board meetings. And as it was pointed out, we are an $11 million organization. I have been board members of 503Cs and worked for them. I have never witnessed this kind of ignorant process at all. And you know what? You are the one that is out of order 90% of the time. You are like a rabid fox eating your young. Mrs. Hess was trying to get a committee report from a committee that you established and made her chairman. She did not want to be chairman of that committee. And yet, she's about to give her report, and you did it. Order 23, Rule 23. You can't interrupt the person that has the floor. And I'm with the gentleman in the back who we don't have a right to speak up because we don't know what's going on. We don't have information. We can't get feedback. There aren't secretary's reports. There aren't committee reports. There aren't treasurer's reports. We're members of this organization. We can vote people in and we can vote people out. Thank you.
run through the mill. I had to sign up for the um, for the temp agency that they run, and was informed I'd have to do a Microsoft Word altitude test, and I had to fill out all of this stuff about the rent deposit should they place me with temporary employment. I was there three and a half hours. It was the worst professional experience I've ever had in my life. And had I not been so invested, because by now I've already started hearing trickles of unhappiness from the people who live here. I pay dues now to this organization. I know that I can do a job that you guys won't complain about, because if you're complaining, you're going to come help. It's a nonprofit. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be this way. Thank you, Mrs. Beck. Anybody on the uh, um, sign-in sheet or for public comment? Yes, we did. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, Kelly, you just want to uh, no, speak. I'm there. Yeah, just one. Man, one. Uh, it's good. You're good. Okay. Okay. Hi, Kelly McFadden, 15606, Three Fathoms Bank. I prepared a, a written statement. I see on tonight's agenda that Mr. Bell will be presenting a justification for the bylaw vote taken by the 23rd District Board. While I appreciate a statement from Mr. Bell, he is not who I, as a member, want to hear from. I want to hear directly from Mr. Moore, Mr. Stanley, Ms. Tressa, and Mr. Charlotte. You four were on the 2013 board. You four read the bylaws in place at the time. Bylaws that were very clear that bylaw amending was a right reserved solely for the homeowners. You four knew it, and you four ignored it. Thank you. 